<laughs> Hi, my name is Mario Leo, and I'm going to be reading three short stories. Pueblo Negro. Family reunion tonight at 8 p.m. Everyone, convene in mom's room. I was always excited about family reunions. They happen so rarely that I was just happy to have my entire family in the same room and at the same time. My father would lead the conversation in his broken Spanish. Pueblo Negro is what my father used to call it. It's a direct translation from his native Chinese. He would tell us stories of living in the shadows. He would say, people living in El Pueblo Negro have to be home by 6 p.m. every day, no matter what. If you were a kid and you were at your friend's house and you wanted to play one more game of Street Fighter and it was 5.50, you better pinch yourself really hard for having silly thoughts and run home. And if you were an adult and you wanted to have another beer at the bar, you better close your tap immediately and start walking home. If you were part of El Pueblo Negro, you lost your soul at 6 p.m. And, and become a shadow after that. After my, after my dad and brother had come to visit the U.S. last year, my dad would fantasize about moving here. He brought me a Jansport backpack, a pair of Nike shoes, and a whole lot of m and m My dad would say that we could take over my uncle's restaurant and my brother and I could start middle school in San Francisco. I wasn't thrilled with the idea of owning more American products, nor was I that scared of living in the shadows. I was more thrilled at the possibility that moving to a new country might mean that my parents might get back together. Architect. The sunlight always manages to enter my dad's room despite the heavy navy blue curtains. His room is long and awkward. It was supposed to be a normal square room, but the architect made minor changes to our house because his gravity-defined design was going to crumble down, just like my parents' marriage. The first change was my dad's room shape. The second change was the addition of a column right in the middle of our living room. I picture my parents having tea in the living room with this column obstructing their view of each other. I imagine them having a big house party and awkwardly dancing in the living room, dodging the column. Anyways, that's only my imagination playing a trick on me because we still have not built the living room or the kitchen or the guest bedroom. My parents used all of, all of their money to build the first three bedrooms of the house, and nothing more. My mother, she hung up an old bed sheet in the hallway where the construction had ended. It was her way of pretending that we had a real house. To hide the fact that there was a column in the middle of the living room. This column was supposed to bolster the house, to support the weight of my family, to fix the architect's mistakes. But like an old car that has been repaired too many times, the house and my parents' marriage were headed nowhere. Visa. The sign of our restaurant read, sorry, we're closed. The neon lights on the porch were turned off, and the gates to the front entrances were shut close. No waiters, no cooks, and no customers. It felt almost like it was the end of the world and we were the only survivors. Our flight left at 3 p.m. that afternoon. We were flying to Lima so we could make it to our interview to the American Embassy to get our visas. It was moments like this where I felt the happiest. My parents seemed to be to get, they, they seemed like they were pretending to get along. They even called each other nice things. They have never spent more than a couple of hours together without getting mad at each other. And now they seem like two high school sweethearts. I wanted this trip to last forever. And if getting a visa was all it took to solve my parents' problems, I wanted to get a visa every single day for all the countries of the world. Thank you. <laughs>